Hi everyone, this is your boy Zach, and uh, this is <laughs> this is my review of Berserk number one, and this has been coming for a year. But this video is going to be very strange for a couple reasons. Number one, I'm not going to open this book. <laughs> I'm just going to show you that I actually do have it. I opened it. I read it. It was like 220 pages. It was a quick read, um, and uh, I didn't like it. But I love the franchise, so I'll get into that. So this is Berserk. This is, I had to do a lot of research and some of it was kind of confusing. So Berserk is a franchise created as a manga in 1988 by this guy named Kentaro Mira. Um, and uh, it has something like 40. It says 38, but I think this was printed like two years ago. When was this printed? Yeah, I think this is from like a 20... I don't know. It's from a while ago. So, um, I ordered this on Amazon and uh, I've talked to a lot of people because people have been recommending this forever. When I've expressed some extreme frustrations with the American comic book industry, specifically the superhero part of it, I said, you know what? I'm tired of politics. I'm tired of political correctness. I'm tired of, you know, I just want to be entertained. I want, you know, uh, 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 visually uh, interesting, heroic slash action entertainment. And people kept saying, you got to check out Berserk. You're going to like Berserk. But a couple things happened. <laughs> Usually when you talk about something, you get a variety of opinions on something. But the interesting thing was I got the same advice over and over and over again. They said, you're not going to like the first couple volumes. They say, uh, the main character, Guts, he's just an edgy boy, and you're just going to roll your eyes a lot, which I did for pretty much this entire book. I did not like this book. If I hadn't heard about people give me some information about it, that's why I'm not going to flip through it, because I think it's going to make you not want to check it out. Um, they said, the first arc is just kind of trash, it's just whatever. This, the I guess uh, they're called, it's called The Golden Age. That's uh, I think it's... They call these volumes, not graphic novels. Volumes 3 through 14. And that's like the real deal where they really get into the what makes the story rich. The other thing I said <laughs> is that I heard from people is they go, it's at 40 volumes right now and I just want it to be over. It sounds like this has some cool moments, but the real like meat of the uh, of the franchise was... Volumes 3 through 14, which luckily, if you got Netflix in America, they got these three uh, um, animated movies that tell that story. So what happened is uh, I ordered this and then I'm kind of busy. I was like, uh, I saw it was on Netflix. So I go, I'll watch the first one because I was confused. I thought the first animated movie on Netflix was going to just start at the beginning of the manga. And it doesn't. But it starts at the beginning of the story because it basically shows you him as like this loner hero kind of like mad max but then in the they do the golden age arc and it shows like back when he was younger when he was not all mutilated with the robot arm and missing his eye and all that type of stuff um and it tells you the whole story so that's what i'm going to talk about for most of this because that stuff was i was just basically just mesmerized um so much so that I'm probably going to watch that trilogy over again. Not immediately, but it's definitely I'll rewatch it. So Berserk is about <laughs> this guy called Guts. And I know you're rolling your eyes when you hear that name, but it fits. It totally fits. Guts is this dude who um, basically has uh, he's you know, he's had a troubled childhood. It's set in this kind of pseudo Middle Ages, uh, I'd say roughly analogous. I would, I would describe it as King Arthur mixed with Game of Thrones. Like, it has that fairy tale aspect of, you know, castles and knights and kings and princesses and, and, and uh, you know, the ballroom. And then it just has horrible, horrible violence, like disgusting violence. I mean, the funny thing is when I started saying that I was watching the Netflix movies, I would say, oh, I'm on the first one and the second one. They're like, oh, get ready for the third one. I was like, what? what oh somebody's gonna die like no <laughs> even when people warn you about the third one 
it, you're still not ready. So anyway, get into it. Uh, Berserk is about this guy named Guts. He's a wanderer. He has this. He's kind of like Conan, except for it's, ex, Conan had the Wheel of Pain, which made him into you know this this muscle bound anti hero. Uh, Berserk has this uh, giant uh, sword, and it's basically he's basically lifting weights all the time. So he's incredibly strong. And uh, but he's also kind of damaged and kind of childlike. So he ends up meeting up with this uh, band, this mercenary band called the Band of the Falcon. And they're led by this guy named Griffith, who I didn't know was a guy (laughs) when I first started watching it because it's manga, it's anime, and they just draw people however the hell they want. Um, I always joke about in American comics, they make the, the women look like men. Well, in manga and anime, it's the opposite. Now, the funny thing is, when I first saw Griffith, I was pretty sure he was a woman, so much so that I had to Google it. And you know how Google works. You type in, is Griffith from Berserk? And then it finishes and says, a woman. <laughs> and Griffith is is uh, not a woman. Uh, Griffith, as a, 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 somebody who knows this very well, said, uh, Griffith isn't a woman. Griffith is a pretty boy. And if, you're, if you looked at the image on the video and you saw this, what... You might have thought was a girl with white hair. That's Griffith. Griffith is very, very interesting. Um, And a character I don't think you could pull off anywhere except for manga and anime. Because there's all these kind of Japanese cultural aspects that are very specifically Japanese. But if you kind of marinate in them and you get used to them, they seem normal. Like now when I look at Griffith, like I definitely see that he's a guy. But when I was first, I was very confused because he has these very feminine features and uh, he has, you know, a very like slight build. Um, but uh, Griffith is a guy with a vision or rather an obsession. He was, you know, born of humble origins and he wants to uh, have a castle, be a king, have a kingdom. And oh boy, does he want that. So at one point, they, these, uh, I think these, okay, so there's a lot of spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Go watch the videos, the uh, the the movies on uh, Netflix. The ones on Netflix. So this is going to get confusing. It's going to get really, really confusing. So there's a manga that's been printed since like 1980 or 1989. Like 40 volumes of it. Then there was a hand-drawn anime from like 1997. I've heard that's got a really good rep. Then there was a series of movies... From 2012 to 2013, which those are kind of have like middle. I thought they were fantastic. They do have some uh, problems. Number one, they're doing, they're mixing, they're doing, I think it's called 2.5 uh, animation. You're mixing it between 2D and, and, and 3D. So they'll use 3D models, but they'll trace over them. Or sometimes they mix them in and they put a filter on them and it looks kind of horrible. But most of the time it looks pretty good. Although they mix it. Sometimes they're 3D models and sometimes they're 2D. But the story they tell is is, is very good. Um, so that was 2012, 2013. But it just came out, you know, for basically the West on Netflix right now. Then there is a TV show that started in 2016 that has like the most laughably bad animation you've ever seen. And I used to be a 3D animator, and I thought I had seen the worst 3D animation ever. My first 3D, an- I was very, very briefly a 3D animator. I got out because the pay was ridiculous. If, if your dream is to intermittently make $28,000, by all means, become a 3D animator. Um, but uh, I got hired. My first job was fixing uh, animation that had been outsourced to uh, India uh, because it was cheaper. But it wasn't really cheaper because they had to pay for it to all be fixed. So the thing about that is like they would hire different teams. Like you go to a website and they would have the A team doing, you know, some great reels and some cycles in animation. You have, you know, like a breathing cycle and then the run. That's actually just two steps and you you loop it. Um, Make sure to take out the zero frame. Um, uh, And then, um, you know, you do death animation and stuff like that. So there was, I was given a whole list of, you know, a whole bunch of animation files and some were quite good and some were, I'm not kidding. It was like, there were animals in it. So a cow dying was literally a cow standing like this. And then the next frame was right there with like nothing in between. It just looked like a cow figurine. I watched the anime, the, the one from 20. 20- 
13, which is came out in 2018 on Netflix. And so what happens is you got basically two king dinglings, you know, two like awesome guys that can fight and kill 100 people. Uh, one is Griffith, who's very kind of feminine looking and very ethereal. You know, you'd get like a young David Bowie to play him in a movie. Um, Berserk or uh, Guts is basically Asian Conan the Barbarian with kind of like a like a shy demeanor. So uh, they got this mercenary band, and uh, basically it's it's there's it, there's it's very uh, how would I say it homoerotic <laughs> yeah that's that's a word like uh, guts and uh, what's the name Griffith are kind of in love with each other but not really they're only really in love with each other if you come straight from you know western kind of storytelling if you read manga and i always joke about like oh you're a weeb like i've actually read a good amount of manga i read you know sanctuary and crime freeman basically everything that got translated blade of the immortal um everything that dark horse translated in like the late 80s to like the mid 90s i read all that so so i got a okay ish handle on uh, manga but one of the things that's a trope in in uh manga is like the two guys who are kind of obsessed with each other and if you come from western stuff you kind of like um are these guys in love with each other well yeah but not like in a hallmark romance way it's almost kind of like a obsessive rivalry with deep feelings and you kind of only see this type of thing when you when you watch like manga and anime you don't really see it in in uh other uh, cultures but basically they're kind of obsessed with each other because each one kind of has something the other the other doesn't um griffith is very intelligent highly intelligent and he's very determined but he does he's very muted and reserved because he always has to plan and he always has to get used to being a leader and cutting people loose whereas guts is just kind of mad max he just does whatever he actually ends up being basically uh, becomes Griffith's bitch, you know, he gets defeated and Griffith is like, I defeated you, which means I own you, which Guts is kind of weirdly into. He's just kind of like, fine. You think he'd be like, no, I'd rather die. He's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you beat me. That's, that's the rules of the land. So he ends up joining up with the band of the Falcon Hawk bird band of band of the Hawk. I think that's what it is. Um, and they're kind of like this goofy ragtag group of like Disney characters. But we start with all the, you know, the shenanigans of, uh, oh, uh, they, uh, they're they a mercenary band. They hire themselves out to um, this one uh, king. They end up uh, helping win the war, which is kind of based on the Hundred Years' War between Britain and France. And then they find themselves in a victory. And this is where things get really interesting because... It, so far, it's just been like two kind of cool King Dingling, like Mr. Awesome guys kind of like orbiting around each other. And there's this uh, character named Casca who gets much, much more interesting as time goes by. At the beginning, she's just kind of generic girl hero, uh, but it's in, you know, it's manga. So she's not beating up all the men like she's constantly kind of embarrassed that since she's a woman in what's tr traditionally a man's. Uh, vocation, which is being a mercenary or a knight, that she kind of has to work harder and sometimes she just can't do the things that they can do. And it really, really bothers her, which is very kind of like rich and human. You don't get that. One of the things like when you're in this stuff, like when you're even in, in this first volume that I didn't like, uh, but especially when you're watching this stuff, like you're immersed in it, like you are totally in that uh, world, which is what like stories are supposed to do one of the biggest problems with having politics extremist politics personal politics all the dumb things they put in sjw books is it constantly takes you out you go oh yeah this is about trump oh this is about the border crime. oh this is about their twitter enemy like you're constantly coming out of it and then it basically breaks immersion and the story is effectively broken but everything in this is like so heartfelt um, and it's very, very deep and rich. One of the things that I kept laughing about is I kept wondering how you write the script for an anime, because there's a lot of subverbal communication. There's a lot of someone with like quivering eyes and they make a sound like, whoa, oh, 
And like, how do you write that <laughs> in a script? Like, do you, do you do it phonetically? Do you just explain the emotion they're having? Because there's a lot of like extreme frustration. There's a, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, uh, sexual excitement or, or, or shame or things like this. And they're conveyed in these kind of like subverbal, you know, tones, I'd, I'd call them. Um, but uh, one of the things is like, it's just really emotional in a way you just don't see in, in, in most Western writing and specifically in SJWs, which comics which basically they eschew emotion and struggle and they just cut right to victory the funny thing is in berserk the victory is where everything goes wrong because we're not in a fairy tale world we're in a horrible world where people die and life is cheap cheap and it's short and most people are basically some kind of a slave or servant to someone else everyone serves someone else so what happens is uh you know, Guts is in, you know, they after they've gone through this very hard campaign and they've won and they've actually, uh, they're actually, the band is, um, they're, because they've been so, like, crucial in the victory of the Hundred Years' War that they're they're being made uh, uh, nobility um, and they're being given titles. And this is a big deal because these are all just peasants. Um, and they're at this, you know, ball and on all, you know, the, 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 soft people who live in the palace they're treating them as like celebrities oh i heard i heard you killed a hundred men Ooh, can i touch your sword and some of these people are really like lapping it up they're like hey we won and guts is just he's not here for the victory like he's a really simple person he wants to live he has a very very strong will to live but he's not for ballrooms or palaces or courtyards like he's he literally says like I, I like killing people um so basically he nopes out and he's like yeah peace out hey you guys won the war i'm out and then griffiths is like uh now they've kind of really grown to really respect each other and be, and seem to be friends um but but griffith has basically said i can't be a friend with someone i own you know if you want to be my friend, if you want me to respect you, you got to basically, you, you got to break out. So what happens is um, uh, Gus just kind of goes AWOL. And so the ba his band tries to stop him because, you know, he's like a, a big hero in their band. And then Griffiths is like, hey, remember I own you? And they have a fight. And uh, it's all these fights, especially in these the anime movies, are like really good. And uh, Gus... Uh, beats Griffith and it's a big deal and it just made me think I go like when is the last time in American comics specifically in this SJW era when something is like you're like holy shit like guts me Griffith like it was so shocking when that happened I would say like the last time something was a really really big deal was like uh, late 80s early 90s I remember when what crossover was it? It was probably Inferno, uh, where Cyclops, I remember Walt Simonson drew it. Cyclops shot uh, Mr. Sinister and he blew him into a million pieces because Mr. Sinister had a weakness to the optic blast. And that was just like shocking. The other one is probably when, uh, when Magneto pulled all of the adamantium out of uh, Wolverine. And I forget, I forget that. Um, uh, crossover's name but that one was it was the one that had the holograms on the cover but that one was just like like even knowing it was coming you just couldn't believe it uh robin being killed jason todd robin being killed by the joker you just it just blew your freaking mind like this is when i came up this is why i like comics so much and i was like this just doesn't happen now like one of the things is that people don't really care right now Comics is, is, is a way station to animation or TV or movies. Or it's just a brag. Hey, I'm person of Group X and I got a book out. And yeah, it's not selling, but haha, ha, take that. And sells like, what? The reason this got to 40 volumes is, is because it sold. And the reason it sold is because this Kentaro Miura, whoever he is, he's like really, really into it. Okay, so getting back to the anime. Bruh, I'm telling you. Okay, so uh, Griffith is really messed up because he just got defeated and it's not even like a proud thing like oh you know you know the student is now the master like he's shattered so he goes back to the castle and he's he's, he's just been made a, a member of the nobility but he's still like 
with an asterisk, you know, like he used to be a peasant and he was a mercenary. So he goes to like the, the princess and he has sex with her. Now, this is a big problem and ends up getting him arrested. And then he gets tortured for a year straight. And this isn't like Lethal Weapon 1 torture where you look cool and they just spray some water on you and you have like a cool hairdo. Like he's tortured like re- like people got tortured. His tongue is cut out. His tendons are cut. Um, so he just flops around. He's basically been starved. and he's been, he's been tortured to where he's basically a crazy person. Um, they find out about this and the band, they go to rescue him and they're kind of thinking like it's like the old days. There used to be a lot of rescues and, and adventures and they go and they see him and it's like, they see that he's ruined. Like, and they, they just can't admit it. Like it's obvious there's no coming back. Like he was basically this like kind of like perfect angelic guy who could do anything and win anything and beat everyone. And now he's just destroyed, but they still kind of. They have this loyalty and affection for him, so they um, they rescue him. And that was, what they needed to do was put him out of his misery. But they rescue him, and they're, and they're, they're, just, they're like, hey, we're going to get you fixed up, and we're going to feed you. And no, it doesn't work like that, because this is where it just gets absolutely crazy. So, uh, and weirdly enough, a lot of this stuff is stuff that happened at the end of the God King storyline. <laughs> so I got to change some stuff in my storyline because a lot of it's very similar. Um, but uh, what we found out is he is kind of was online to be a replacement kind of demon god. So uh, Griffith and Guts and the the band of the Falcon Hawk, um, uh, they all get transported into this night world and when i say nightmare world i'm talking a nightmare one of the things i don't like about let's say you know it's like avengers infinity war it's it's everyone gets into these situations that are terrifying or weird or scary or just you should be discombobulated and they're all just kind of fine a lot of quips a lot of jokes they're all cool like no one's like what the hell where am i so the band of the falcon hawk they get transported in into his nightmare realm and they're all they just all start freaking out so they're like we we were on the pill why are we and it's like horrible they, they start freaking out and then basically they're all just done so what happens is griffith is told you know we're, we can heal you we can give you power you can be the king you always want to be but you have to sacrifice your band i mean i forgot there was even more horrible stuff like this this griffith he's been so like destroyed and he's insane that at one point when uh Casca like his female lieutenant is trying to nurse him not like nurse him like with food um he basically flops on top of her and is like he's trying to rape her and it's just horrifying like just like this guy is so changed from what he used to be so the thing is that guts a, who literally used to be owned by Griffith, but who you know has this affection and loyalty to him and the band, like they're just trying to save Griffith. But Griffith is just like gone. There's nothing left but his ambition. So they say, if you sacrifice your band, we'll make you a god. So he agrees and they transform into this character named Femto, who looks a lot like the Phantom of the Paradise, who looks a lot like God King. <laughs> oh boy. It's just, I don't know. I never saw it, but there's a lot of similarities. Um, so then uh, all of his band, they, they're given this mark called the brand. The brand basically means you've you've been singled out to be a sacrifice. So they all get sacrificed, and they get sacrificed in the worst, most horrifying ways. I mean, people say, like, oh, it's watch out for the third one. It gets dark. I thought dark was going to be like bone tomahawk. Like one person gets killed in a really disgusting way. No. Like, you have to understand, this was borderline a King Arthur story two movies ago. And in the third movie, there's a scene where you're effectively in hell. And Guts, is his hand is trapped in his giant jaws. And he's watching his best female friend, Casca, be raped by his best male friend, Griffith, now Femto. And, like, it goes on forever. It's horrifying and, like... You're like, how do we get there? So that's one of the things. Basically, it's origin for this, which is like this nightmare world. But 
it was just such a like a ringer because you like went through the like hey, I remember how they met and they had their victories and you remember oh do 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 we won the joust oh we're going we're wearing our finery and now it's like this is as horrible as anything can get so uh, guts ends up cutting off his own arm to go rescue Casca and try to kill uh, Femto Griffith he's not able to because Femto is basically a god right now. And they get cast. They're able to escape back down to Earth. But a couple problems. Number one, Casca is basically uh, she, she's a potato in her brain. Like she, Her brain is just fried. Even worse, um, I don't remember if Casca has the brand, but uh, Guts has the brand. Which means wherever he goes, any kind of supernatural being can sense him and is literally drawn to him because he's been targeted, like he's branded for his sacrifice. So this, it sounds like the main story is all after this stuff, but I'm telling you, you know, you always hear these people talk about oh, this, the Naruto or whatever, and you're like, whatever, it looks weird, I'm not in, but they're like so into it. Oh my gosh. Now I talked to some friends and I told them the things I like I you know I didn't like about this and I liked it and they and they basically said, eh, you're probably good because the rest of the series it sounds like it's more in this vein. It's like a lone guy fighting random monsters, but the stuff I liked was from the Golden Age, but I'm telling you, like that stuff put me through the ringer. And it was an epic, like tragedy. And I just don't get that from like, you always hear people, they're like, you know, you're complaining, you know, m- manga, anime, it's just waiting for you. You got problems with the American comic book industry, Marvel, and superheroes, all crazy. Manga and anime are, are just waiting for you. But, there's a warning. <laughs> because there's stuff that you don't want that's all mixed in there. So, I, I've, I've read some articles, you know, pop psychology, you know, sociology, and they're talking about how... In uh, Japan, like crime is very, very low, very low, murders, very low. And one of the things they say about one of the reasons the society is so peaceful is because their entertainment is allowed to get really dark. Like you don't understand. Like I can't flip through this. My channel will get demonetized. Um, and sometimes you get into these places where you're just uncomfortable. You're like, I don't like this. Like I don't know what's going on it's it's not funny it's not fun like it's really really dark they're basically allowed to go almost anywhere and you just go like ah this is too much and and i was talking to a friend and she said you know sometimes you just got to learn to ignore parts of stories because they'll they have like these running themes that you will just be like i can't handle this um but Overall, like it, it, the stuff just feels more human. One of the things, like I always say about SJWs, is that is they they don't human very well. Like they want to control what you can say, what you can think, what you can buy, what you can sell, what you can create, and they always want to uh, put these you know rules on things. But the thing is, like we need outlets. We need to be able to joke about the things that are you're not supposed to joke about, or go to a really dark place in the storyline. It helps you get stuff out. This is very natural. It's human. It's it's in all societies. Stuff like this happens. The things that aren't human, that are only basically in regimes, are the things that SJWs want to say. Oh, you can't tell that joke. You can't tell that story. You can't think that thought. You can't say that word. You can't have that belief. It's like no, 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 no. You guys are the weirdos. You don't make the rules. We're all normal. We're not going to stop being human just because you can't start. But anyway, um, so Berserk, uh, what would my, I recommend? I would recommend you watch the anime on Netflix, definitely. Uh, I probably am eventually going to track down the, the manga of the Golden Age. And I think that's that's probably it. I actually didn't like the guy's art style that much. So I'll probably just suffice myself with the, uh, the anime. But anyway, tell me what you think about this video. This is a long time coming. So I did Berserk, which I got a super chat for more than a year ago so whoever sent me that super chat thank you uh i'm doing my hero magadamia tomorrow uh i still got to do that extinction agenda but it's um that and the the uh the new gods uh like giant book those are in storage so i gotta go get those out of storage um i'm not actually sure where they are so many boxes are kind of trapped um 
But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure to still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone who gave to the Patreon. I'm shutting that down probably right after this. Uh, uh, thanks to everyone who has given to the Indiegogo. Moving forward. Don't worry. We're moving forward. And uh, uh, and thanks to everyone who's given to the GoFundMe uh, because, you know, the it's, it's a long road. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll have more. Well, am I doing new? No, I'm not doing new comic reviews, but I am doing Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and My Hero Academia. Did I say Macadamia earlier? My Hero Academia, uh, the, the volume, the manga. I'm going to do that one tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.